Hello, folks. Wayward Echo here. Today, we're going to be doing our next installment in my crafting series. For this one, we're going to be talking about cooking and cocktails with Echo. So in the real world, the meat space here, uh, cocktails and, and cooking are two of my favorite things. So I figured carrying that on over to the crafting world within seven days to die would be a good topic to walk through. So in this, we'll take a look at the campfire and all the things that go into it, some of the mechanics around it. And then we'll talk about the different foods and the different drinks that you can make and what's good, what's not. Uh, and that's it. So let's just jump on in. All right, folks. So here we are at Echo's little craft shack. So we'll head on in here. And I've got a little kitchen area set up here. Some Shamway foods, our good old meat-like products. So the first thing you're going to want to do to get started off here is to get yourself a campfire. I've already got one down here. But if you didn't have one, they're pretty easy to make. Just takes five small stones. And I walked through this on some of my other uh, videos. So go ahead and craft this up. It's just a quick three second run. And then you put it down. Once you open this up, you'll see the interface is fairly similar to all the other crafting stations in Seven Days to Die. On the left side here, you've got the things you can make. You've got a couple tabs across the top. So you've got food, drinks, and then your chemicals. So likewise, you've got a couple slots across the top for mods, a place for fuel. This is what's going to crank up your fire. Uh, what you make will show up here. And then down across the bottom left, you have your output queue. So we're going to go ahead and grab all the mods that we can put in here right out of the gate. So in this, you've got the cooking pot. And all this does is enables a number of the different recipes that are out there. Then next on here, you're gonna have the cooking grill, same type of thing. It's gonna open up and unlock some recipes. And then the last thing that you have is the beaker, same thing. It's just gonna unlock some of the recipes. So we'll put them all in there, toss some wood here and fire this guy up. So once you're here, the interface is fairly simple, just like all the others. You're gonna come in here and I've got my favorite lined up, uh, a little bit of bacon and eggs. So for this, you'll see up here, it takes five raw meat and two eggs, and that will give you some bacon and eggs in just 12 seconds here. So we'll go ahead and cook one up and we'll watch it run through its countdown. You see here, I can cancel it if I wanted to. We're not gonna do that because we want some tasty bacon and eggs. All right, so boom, we've got our bacon and eggs. And that's the simple process of how to use this. So I wanna take a few minutes and talk about the mechanics of both food and drinking in Seven Days to Die because it's not exactly straightforward or obvious in any way, shape, or form. So the one nice thing that I will say is on Alpha 19, they added in your food bar and your uh, hydration bar in a place that's easy to find. So in the past, there was only one way to do this, and that's to go into your menu here. You can go look at your character, and you'll find your stamina, your food, and your water up here. So in the past, this was the only place to go get it. Now they've added bars across the bottom. So this green bar down here on the left is gonna be your food, and the blue bar on the right is going to be your hydration level. Now, here's the question, what do these matter and how do they impact the game and your play and whatnot? So when you eat, it's going to increase what's called your fullness. Um, and this is a stat that's in there that doesn't really quite show up here, but it can go 25 points. Or when you start the game, it's 25 points above your max stamina, and it can go up to 50 points above your max stamina. And this fullness is will slowly go down over time. Just if it, you're sitting still doing nothing, it'll go down. But if you're doing anything like running and, and, and fighting and things like that, and your stamina reduces and your stamina has to recharge, your stamina recharging also will cause that fullness to reduce faster. So the ultimate impact of this little bar here, your, your, your food bar, is as it gets lower, you're gonna hit a point where your character starts getting hungry and you're gonna hear your stomach growling and it's gonna reduce your stamina. And then you're gonna hit a stage where your character will actually be starving. And at that point, you're gonna see your character take damage over time until you die. So. That is the main reason we keep up with the food. It's very important. And then the other thing, the, the hydration side of the house, um, similar sort of effect. Uh, this, when this bar runs out, 
then you're going to hit a phase of dehydration and you'll go through levels of dehydration that will get systematically worse and worse where you're losing health and stamina. Uh, you'll stop being able to recover stamina. So a couple other things associated with this. When you eat food, there's different types of food that you can eat. Uh, there's there's good, good tasty stuff like this that's safe. You notice there's no negative ramifications of eating these tasty bacon and eggs. But this raw meat, on, other hand, on the other hand, has a 12% chance to give you dysentery. So not surprisingly, the runs are not good for you. So if I just sit here and eat, eat a few of these, we'll see, mmm, raw meat. And there we go. We've got ourselves some dysentery, just like everyone loves. Lovely, lovely graphics that we've got here. And if you manage to do that, dysentery is going to end up causing you to periodically lose water and food. Not surprising. And then it's also going to cap your, your water so that you cannot go above those bars at all. The next thing that's important to understand about food is you do have something that can help let your food last a little bit longer. Um, and that's this concept of efficient digestion. And there's some drinks out there that'll help you with that. So if I go over here to my cooler here, and first off, we're gonna grab a couple things. We're gonna grab some goldenrod tea, and we'll go ahead and grab some pure mineral water. So our goldenrod tea, number one, is going to help us with that dysentery. So we'll go ahead and use some of that. And then secondarily, we're gonna grab some of this pure mineral water and it has the effect, oh, I guess it also has the effect to cure dysentery, but it has the effect of efficient digestion. So what this is gonna do for the five minutes that this lasts, anytime that you are regening your stamina, which would typically cause you to lose more food, uh, you're going to lose 15% less. So it's just going to allow your food to last a little bit longer. So the other factor to consider in regards to food that's going to impact you is the environment around you in terms of hot and cold. So extreme heat is going to impact your hydration level negatively and your stamina. And then cold is going to impact your food level uh, and, your, and your stamina as well. So those are two other things to look for. So let's just jump on over. Uh, rather than go through here, I'm gonna give you a quick menu view of the different foods and drinks in the game so that you can see at, at a quick glance the, the impact of each of them. Because this is pretty much all the mechanics you have here about cooking. It's pretty straightforward. Hello folks and welcome to the Echo Lounge. I'm gonna walk you through the menu here. First, I'll give you kind of a, a rundown on how this is structured. So if you look over here, you'll see our first page of the menu, and it is structured in a way that it will take you through the perks that you unlock under the strength tree, under Master, Sh Ch ah, Master Chief, <laughs> under Master Chef. Uh, it'll walk you through the different levels that are there, and then it'll show you on the, the far left bar is gonna give you um, whether it requires the grill or the cooking pot to be able to create. Um, and then it'll give you the ingredients, and then you're gonna see a parentheses there uh, where it'll tell you how much food it gives you, how much health, how much water, and then how much stamina bonus each food item is going to give you. So starting up at the top, we've got charred meat and boiled egg. This is what you can build without having to have any schematics or any perks put into Master Chef. I have a hard time saying Master Chef, not Chief. So these two are pretty much so hot garbage at the beginning. You're better off saving your eggs until you can build some of the better foods later on. And the charred meat is just, you know, if it's an emergency and you've got to because you haven't been able to find other food, maybe you started in a really rough biome, that's an option. But then you've got to counterbalance that with water because it's going to take water away from you. So moving down into the bachelor section, this is your first level of perk in, in MasterChef. And in this, you've got corn on the cob, baked potato, grilled meat, boiled meat, and cornbread, which I'm going to all place in the not so great category. Um, the cornbread's especially bad because, number one, the corn will end up helping you later on. Because if you collect the corn, you can turn it into seeds and get you some replenishable food. So 
when you make the cornbread, you're taking the corn, you're grinding it into cornmeal, then you're making cornbread. And then that cornbread, you have to eat like 80,000 of those to even, you know, get any level of fullness anyway. So you'll be sitting there clicking in the button forever. So I would advise just skipping that and holding on to your corn for later. So the last one on this is one of my favorites. The bacon and eggs is a staple of almost every run that I do. You know, I hope that I get lucky and either find the schematic out there or I'll just put a point just so I can get this one. Because for five raw meat and two eggs, getting 36 food is pretty significant. So moving on down there, let's get on to Master Chef level two, Grandma. So this has a bunch of, there's no bad ones here. These are almost all really, really good. Uh, you know, steak, potato meal, meat stew, blueberry pie, all great. Uh, some of these I starred, and I didn't star them because they're the best. I starred them because I wanted to call them out for one factor or another. Vegetable stew, as you get into the mid game, is one of the best sustainable, easy things you can create. Um, because you can do that with nothing that you have to find out in the world other than the boiled water, which you find in abundance. So once you get a good farm going, you got the potatoes, corn, mushrooms all right there. You can just replenish this one, and this can become a staple, um, you know, outside of any major encounters that you have. So let's flip on over to the second page of the menu. We've got, we're still in level two of Master Chef with Grandma. Uh, you got the pumpkin bread here. Eh. Not that great. Pumpkin pie is not bad, but not fantastic. But then we get to the pumpkin cheesecake, and this is a real critical one. This is going to help out a lot for, for selling things and buying things. So that plus five to barter, this is one of the nice stackable items that you can get in the game. So if you can get this recipe either through this or through a schematic, really good one to have in the game. So the next one we get into is Master Chef level three, and this is going to be short order cook. So this is going to give you the chili dog, the fish tacos, and the hobo stew, all of which are really, really nice. Um, can't complain about any of these. The fish tacos is actually really nice because it doesn't take much to make just some cornmeal and a can of salmon that you're going to find about. Um, sham chowder is really nice because it gives you that extra fortitude. Uh, and you tend to find a ton of sham all over the place. And the other items in that one are all reproducible through your farm. So you got the potatoes and the corn. That just makes it a really, really easy one to use. So then last, uh, at least for the menu that I'll show here, I'll get to some on the next page once we get to cocktails. But for Master Chef Level 4 on Army Cook, you've got your tuna gravy toast, shepherd's pie, gumbo stew. These are all going to be really, really, really strong. Um, the only drawback on these is that they take multiple cans. And those are non-reproducible, so you can't just crank out cans. You've got to find those through looting. But otherwise, they're all really, really good um, in terms of giving you a ton of food and some health recovery. So the last one here I called out uh, spaghetti, mainly because you only need one can. You get that one can, the rest of the stuff is going to be reproducible things or things that you typically find, like animal fat you're going to find all over the place. So that is Master Chef level four. When you get to five, the unlock is actually not going to be food. So for this, we're gonna switch over to the cocktail menu. All right, so on to the cocktails. We're gonna start at the top again and murky water, not so good for the drinking, but good as a stepping stone. You know, you find a ton of it in toilets and other great places like that. Uh, or if you're just picking water up out of a natural water source in a bottle. So that's a stepping stone to get to the boiled water, which is used in a number of these recipes. Um, so the next on the list we've got is beer, which is actually not made at the campfire. This one has to have a chemistry station. Uh, it's useful for combat type builds where you're up close and personal because this is going to give you some extra melee um, punch and some stun resists. So pretty good stuff. The next one on the list is pure mineral water. This is the top end of hydration for the game. So this one's going to give you uh, efficient digestion as well as a plus heal chance for dysentery and then on top of it it also gives you the best water of any drink in the game so really good overall next yucca juice is basically just upgraded boiled water it's just gives you extra hydration goldenrod tea uh, at this point in time we've jumped over into you'll notice it says mc1 that's master chef level one it unlocks this and this is going to be your your easy way to to cure dysentery if you don't have access to the mineral water. The next one on the list, red tea, will give you efficient digestion, 
The next one takes a ton of stuff to build, but is actually really nice if you're in a colder biome. The, the Yucca Juice Smoothie um, is going to give you a significant amount of cold resist. Though this one, you know, does take a lot of materials and it takes you getting all the way up to Master Chef 4 to be able to use. Coffee. I don't really drink coffee that often, um, but if you're in a cold biome, it's useful because it gives you a little bit of the cold resist and it's super easy to make. You find coffee beans all over the place. Blackstrap coffee. I should have mentioned this under pure mineral water because um, blackstrap coffee and pure mineral water are two items that you can't get perks to unlock these. You actually have to get the books that are out there. So one is under the, the blackstrap coffee is under art of mining and pure mineral water is under, I think, treasure hunting. So you need those little books that you'll find out and about to unlock these. But blackstrap coffee is going to give you cold resist again. Um, and, you know, follows the, the meta there of having some gunpowder and whatnot from mining. The next three that are on here are what you get for Master Chef Level 5. And these are all really, really, really good. Um, the first one probably being the best. So Grandpa's Learning Elixir is really good uh, for Horde Knights. If you can have a few of these, even if you can't make them, these are good ones to, if you find them to keep them. Um, because this is going to bump your XP in times where you know you're going to have concentrated combat. So, yeah, get your grandpa's uh, learning elixir and get your get your fight on, your punches, your, your shots. The next one on here, Moonshine. So the only reason I don't like this one, I mean, you, if you look at all the stats on this one, this has got a ton of stuff that it does. It does fortitude, it does stun resist, it's got extra health, it's got damage reduction. It's got all this stuff, but it lasts 45 seconds. And I am too lazy to clicky clicky the button all the time to make sure I'm drinking this in the middle of a big throwdown. So if you're willing to do that, it's really powerful, but it doesn't last very long. The last one on here, um, I probably should have started this one also. Grandpa's Awesome Sauce is really nice. So this is another bump to your bartering. Uh, so this is going to stack with the cheesecake that we mentioned earlier. And then if you get some of the candy that also wants barter, and you can stack all these together and get some really amazing deals when you're bringing back a loot haul. I'll typically actually leave chests for loot that I'm going to bring back to the trader and wait till I have a massive swath of them ready and then just wholesale sell it all and then rake, rake in all that sweet loots. So. so that is it for Echo's cocktail and farm to table cooking extravaganza. Um, so one of the things I was thinking as I was putting together this cocktail list here is that at some point in time, I should take each of these and go through and build out a corresponding cocktail here in Meat Space um, that would be fun, you know, based off the colors or some of the components in it. So I could do something like, you know, Grandpa's Moonshine's got blueberries in it. So I could do something blueberry um, flavored or whatnot. Uh, so if you guys are interested in that, uh, Drop some some ideas that you might have down in the comments section and I can play with those ideas. And uh, maybe once I get a, around to streaming and whatnot, uh, you'll see me try out some of these seven days to die cocktails. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you learned something or found out something new and interesting. If you enjoyed this, drop a like and subscribe, follow along. And uh, hopefully in the near future, you'll actually see some of these cocktail recipes come out. All right. Thanks and have a great day, everyone. Take care.